Hey guys. Okay, so we are still reading The Wizard of Oz by L. Frank Baum with the original pictures by W. W. Dinslow, and it is the, oh my goodness, the Chicago Press Edition? Let's see. Yes, the Rand, Riley and Lee Company Chicago Edition, right? So, we're on page 183, and they finally found out who the wizard was and what was going on with that. And so, um, now it's the next morning, and so remember Oz promised that he was going to give the Scarecrow brains, even though the Scarecrow doesn't really need them because he's learning every day, right? He was going to give the Tin Woodman a heart, uh, even though sometimes hearts cause us to be very unhappy. And he was also going to give the lion something that would cause him to remember that he has courage, even though he's always afraid, right? Because he's a cowardly lion. But he still has three, two more days, because, right, this is the next day. So three days to figure out how to get Dorothy back to Kansas, right? And you remember where the wizard is from, right? Omaha. Omaha, Nebraska, right? So he is from the Midwest, too. Nebraska's not too far from Kansas, right? Check him out. It'll be cool. Next morning, the Scarecrow said to his friends, Congratulate me! I am going to Oz to get my brains at last. When I return, I shall be as other men are. I have always liked you as you were, said Dorothy simply. It is kind of you to like a Scarecrow, he replied. But surely you think will think more of me when you hear the splendid thoughts my new brain is going to turn out. Then he said goodbye to them all in a cheerful voice and went to the throne room where he rapped upon the door. Come in, said Oz. The scarecrow went in and found the little man sitting down by the window engaged in deep thought. I have come for my brains, remarked the scarecrow a little uneasily. Oh yes, sit down in that chair, please, replied Oz. You must excuse me for taking your head off, but I shall have to do it in order to put your brains in their proper place. That's all right, said the scarecrow. You are quite welcome to take my head off, as long as it will be a better one when you put it on again. So the wizard unfastened his head and emptied out the straw. Then he entered the back room and took up a measure of bran, which he mixed with a great many pins and needles. Having shaken them together thoroughly, he filled the top of the scarecrow's head with a mixture and stuffed the rest of the space with straw to hold it in place. When he had fastened the scarecrow's head on his body, he said to him, Hereafter, you will be a great man, for I get, have given you a lot of brand new brains. Get it? Brand, brand, wheat bran, right? Wheat bran and pins and needles. So there he is, putting, putting the uh, head back on the scarecrow with all his brand new brains. <laughs> the scarecrow was both pleased and proud at the fulfillment of his greatest wish. And having thanked Oz warmly, he went back to his friends. I mean, he could have done that himself, right? Or somebody could have done it for him. Dorothy looked at him curiously. His head was quite bulging out at the top with brains. How do you feel? she asked. I feel wise indeed, he answered earnestly. When I get used to my brains, I shall know everything. Why are those needles and pins sticking out of your head? said the tin woodman. That is proof that he is sharp, <laughs> remarked the lion. It's funny because it's literal, like pins and needles are sharp, right? Well, I must go to Oz and get my heart, said the tin woodman. So he walked to the throne room and knocked at the door. Come in, called Oz, and the woodman entered and said, I have come for my heart. Very well, answered the little man, but I shall have to cut a hole in your breast so I can put your heart in the right place. I hope it won't hurt you. Oh, no, answered the woodman. I shall not feel it at all. So Oz brought a pair of tinner shears and cut a small square hole in the left side of the tin woodman's breast, because your heart is just slightly to the left, right? Then... Going to a chest of drawers, he took out a pretty heart made entirely of silk and stuffed with sawdust. Isn't it a beauty, he said. It is indeed, replied the woodman, who was greatly pleased. But is it a kind heart? Oh, very, answered Oz. He put the heart in the tin woodman's breast and then replaced it the square of tin, soldering it neatly together where it had been cut. 
There, he said he, now you have a heart that any man might be proud of. I'm sorry I had to put a patch on your breast, but it really couldn't be helped. Never mind the patch, exclaimed the happy woodman. I am very grateful to you and shall never forget your kindness. Don't speak of it, replied Oz. So there's the heart. So if any of you have seen the movie, there's a slight difference in what they put give him in the movie versus what they do in the book, right? It's a little bit of magic in the book. In the movie, they give him what? Does anyone know? A heart-shaped clock, because it has a ticking beat, right? It has a beat, like a heart. Then the Tin Woodman went back to his friends, who wished him every joy on account of his good fortune. The lion now walked to the throne room and knocked at the door. Come in, said Oz. I have come for my courage, announced the lion, entering the room. Very well, answered the little man. I will get it for you. He went to a cupboard and, reaching up to a high shelf, took down a square green bottle, the contents of which he poured into a green gold dish, beautifully carved. Placing this before the cowardly lion, who sniffed at it as if he did not like it, the wizard said, Drink. What is it? asked the lion. Well, answered Oz, if it were inside of you, it would be courage. You know, of course, that courage is always inside one, so that this really cannot be courage until you have swallowed it. Therefore, I advise you to drink it as soon as possible. The lion hesitated no longer, but drank till the dish was empty. How do you feel now? asked Oz. Full of courage, replied the lion, who went joyfully back to his friends to tell them of his good fortune. Was it actually courage? Or did he just tell him that? Anybody ever heard of something called the placebo effect? Look it up. Oz, left to himself, smiled to think of his success in giving the scarecrow and the tin woodman and the lion exactly what they thought they wanted. How can I help being a humbug, he said. When all these people make me do things that everybody knows can't be done, it was easy to make the scarecrow and the lion and the woodman happy because they imagined I could do anything. But it will take more than imagination to carry Dorothy back to Kansas, and I'm sure I don't know how it can be done. Uh-oh. Sir. There is the cowardly lion once he had his film of drinking up his courage. Anybody ever heard the, the uh, term liquid courage? So that is page 188 of The Wizard of Oz by L. Frank Baum. And we will continue next time. We need to find out what's going to happen with Dorothy. Because like the uh, great humbug of Oz said, it's not going to be an easy solution, is it? All right, guys. That's all for now. Talk to you later. Bye for now.